Welcome to John's Northwest. Today we are hiking Pyramid Mountain, a mountaintop that we have reached that overlooks all of Lake Crescent. And up top here is an old fire watch tower. This is located just west of Port Angeles. take Highway 101 from Port Angeles. Within 30 minutes, you should be traveling along the south end of the lake, all the way to the west side. Travel to the west end of the lake, then take a right onto the local road and travel for three miles. The road will become dirt, but the trailhead is located at an area that is paved. The round trip length of this hike is seven miles, with an elevation gain of 2,400 feet. The trailhead marker can be seen easily from the road. Keep following the road until you see a parking lot on your right. Right at the start, the path will zigzag, followed by going across the Spruce Railroad Trail. I was packing light, with two liters of water in my camel pack and a few snacks for the top. Straight up. The first quarter mile will bring you to the foot of the hill. All right. Afterward, the landscape will transform from flat to hillside. Fair distance, dis yeah. fair distance down there. Huh. So far, what we've seen here is a pretty consistent uh, elevation gain. Um, it's pr particularly thin, come to think of it. <laughs> bit by bit, though, we've been getting more and more view of the lake just over to the right. Oh, the, there's a slough, I forget what it's called. Watch out, holes right here. There was a hole in the ground that I had nearly stepped into that could easily twist an ankle. It's best to be wearing a good pair of hiking shoes on any hike that you do. The main design of a good hiking shoe is to prevent a misstep from twisting your ankle. Other qualities that make a good hiking shoe is when it is waterproof for your wet hikes. Huh. It's not a bad idea to get a little spinny when choosing a hiking shoe. Depending on how often you hike, that expensive pair of hiking shoes will last multiple seasons. You know what should be more common? You should like sing that that one commercial Discovery Channel used to do where you got the two astronauts singing. I love the mountains. I love the clear blue skies. I love the bridges. I love when great whites fly. Love the whole world and all its sights and sounds. Boom, be yada, boom, boom, be yada, boom, be yada. <laughs> this is one really dead tree. I mean, look at this. Just, I mean, it looks like you got some termites that went through here, but this, a lot of this bark has stripped off. If you take a look at down here, I mean, it makes me wonder what, 
just how long it's been like this. I mean, this rod, this wood's just rotten. And take a look. This thing's about half a windstorm away from dying off. I mean, falling down, but um, probably the only reason it hasn't fallen is because of all, all these other trees that are protecting it from, from any winds that come through. Wow. Got some loose rock here. Right. I mean, seriously, watch your feet. This <laughs> I wonder how much stuff fell down here. Right. Interesting. It looks like it got carved a little bit. Corners from all the rain we had this year. to this landslide, you are halfway to the top. I mean, well, actually, yeah, it's not that bad, but, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, the spot we got right here. Yeah. Not much to, uh, not much to get your foot on. Just gonna have to kind of hug the wall here. The camera doesn't really do it justice with how Look thin of an area the this. footing is at this point. One slip up and uh, you're sliding. It would not surprise me if somebody was, uh, er. yeah, it's uh, a little skinnier than I would like. So uh, what we just traversed here, uh, <clears throat> Is a lot uh, more slick than what I prefer. I mean, we're, we're, I'm only wearing tennis shoes. Uh, not sure if hiking boots would make any difference, but the, all this sand here, it's real dry and slippery. And, um, whenever you're coming across this stuff, you're going downhill, you want to dig your feet into the hill as much as you can, like use your heel. And But downhills, they, they always feel more tricky because you, you're trying to shift your feet along uh, versus uphill. Uh, because you're already leaning into it, and it seems to work out better. Three times now, going to here, to here, and back up, although some of them felt like just going straight up. I know a couple of people that have that habit. But it continues doing this for probably at least two more times. Looks like a lot of people are certainly going on there. Does it go anywhere? Can't hear ya. Yeah. I don't think this actually goes anywhere. This is probably this is probably the original trail. Hey, Bobby. This is probably the original trail. Let's see what I can do here. <laughs> so many. <laughs> Right. 
<laughs> well, finally, that was a uh, steep ascent we just went up. Um, I think we must have gained about 800 feet in about a lot shorter distance than the rest of the hike we've been going on today. But all of a sudden, it flattens out here and certainly <laughs> it's a welcomed break from the consistent gain in elevation. I mean, we, uh, I ended up getting pretty slow going down to about maybe only a mile an hour, but that's me and my physical ability at the moment to be able to go uphill uh, on hikes. There's a lot of bushes here. Maybe it'd be a good idea to have longer leg pants, or I mean, pant legs. The bushes will clear out once you've reached under the cedar trees. It was this point here I had noticed a sudden shift in the vegetation. Temporarily, the trail has brought us to the other side of the mountain as we continue uphill. Well, currently we're on the other side of uh, the mountain we're currently climbing. And as is, uh, one side, you got Lake Crescent over here, you can see little bits of blue, and that would be the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and beyond that, even further, is Canada. Here's a better view of what we got is the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And what we're probably looking at right now is uh, west of Victoria, because you got Victoria City over here in Port Angeles. Uh, you can always take a ferry over there. So now what we got is this trail. It's kind of it's kind of going in between each side of the, the uh, this mountain here as, as we're going along the top of the ridge, you could say. And we're gonna pretty much end up back on the lake side as soon as we get to the top of this, well, kind of deadish looking area. And I'm just gonna snake way back to the left again. And right before, then it's gonna go kind of a straight up, you could say, not necessarily. And that'll be right before a fire lookout tower we'll be seeing. Seeing how fresh this wood looks, I was given the impression that this had fallen recently. Well, uh, this looks like a more recent obstruction we got on this path here. We're almost at the top, probably within a quarter mile or a half mile. But uh, maybe cruise hopefully later this year will this season will clear it up. With almost all of the switchbacks behind us, we retreated to our first glimpse of Lake Crescent down below. There's another path right here. was literally around the corner.
Don't do that. Oh, this is the old, I guess you could say abandoned fire watchtower. Uh, this, is, this is quite the building. When constructed in 1942, this cabin was specifically built to be used to spot enemy aircraft during World War II. It was later abandoned in 1945, after the war had ended. Looking at a map, you may be able to spot an old forest route that might have originally supplied this cabin. from this location may feel hindered from the trees that grow around the cabin. From here you can see parts of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. I had something else in mind to get the best view of them all.